So hello everybody. Now I think we're good to go. Um, we're really happy that you decided to join us today. Uh, I'm Christina, I'll co-host this webinar, mainly just opening it. So uh, first, next slide, please. Uh, just a couple of um, housekeeping rules. Uh, the webinar is uh, recorded. So if uh, you don't wish to be recorded, keep your camera turned off and the microphones muted. Uh, the recording and the slides will be available shortly after the webinar and sent to you um, in, in a follow-up email. And there will be uh, time at the end of this webinar for questions and you'll be able to ask them yourself or write them in the chat. But during the presentations, your uh, microphones will be automatically muted. So in case you have questions during the presentations, uh, just write them in the chat and we'll get back to them at the end of the webinar. Uh, we also kindly ask you to take a couple of minutes right after the webinar or in the following days to fill up, uh, fill in the satisfaction uh, survey. I'll put the chat, um, I'll put the link in the chat uh, just uh, when we finish. So if we can move to the next slide. Our today's speakers are Laura Morales and Ami Saji. They're both affiliated with Science Po and also part of uh, Shock Work Package 9, Task 2, which is focused on ethnic and migration studies. Laura is a professor in political science and comparative politics and the chair of the Cost Action International Ethnic and Immigrant Minorities Survey Data Network. Emmy is a junior researcher based at Science Po and focuses on implementing the FAIR principles on the EMM survey data. But uh, before passing on the floor to Laura and Ami, let me just briefly introduce uh, SHOC since this webinar is part of the SHOC project. Next slide, please. Uh, SHOC stands for Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud, and there are 47 project partners who have been working uh, together from around the beginning of 2019 and will hopefully do so uh, by the next April. Uh, and the main objectives of this project are creating the social sciences and humanities part of European Open Science Cloud, then maximizing reuse through open science and fair principles, and uh, interconnecting existing and new infrastructures by creating a clustered cloud infrastructure. Um, and since we're already in the last year of the project, there is already a lot to show. Uh, one such result is also the EMM survey registry, but I'll leave the details to the two speakers, our main speakers. Uh, however, I'd like to underline um, the, the two other two important aspects with high priority in shock. Next slide, please. So the first one is about knowledge transfer. Shock provides a wide variety of online and offline trainings and training materials. Uh, as well as an international cross-disciplinary trainer network, and you're welcome to join if you wish. The second aspect uh, is about sharing resources. SHOCK provides an EU-wide, uh, easy-to-use SSH open marketplace where you can openly access tools and data. Um, you can find more information on the SHOCK website. Next slide, please. Um, and so if you're interested, it's uh, in fact quite straightforward. So if you're interested in training events and materials, just head to the training step. Next slide, please. Uh, and if you'd like to explore the contents of the marketplace, then just go to the marketplace step. Uh, next slide, please. Just as a final note, I'd like to invite you to our next shock events. The first one is a, a webinar on good practices in data citation. This webinar will be delivered in November, but we don't have the final dates yet. So if you're interested, please follow shock announcements. And the second event is a workshop, which also might be of interest to you soon, since we will talk about data protection and the GDPR in research practice. And we will also learn how to use the constant form wizard 
which is a tool that provides standardized templates to collect consent. The, this event will take place at the beginning of October, but there is still some time to register through the link which I'll post in the chat. Thank you for, this, uh, for the attention and I'm passing the floor now to Ami. All right, thanks very much, Christina, for the warm introduction. And we're also very excited to be here today and to actually be able to do a second shock webinar about the Ethnic and Migrant Minority, EMM for short, survey registry. Um, and just as a side comment, for those of you who might be interested um, in learning about the first shock webinar we did about a year ago, um, I can, after we're done with our presentations, drop the link to access information about it. Um, and it includes a recording of that webinar. So you're able to kind of look through that material at your own leisure. Um, so given that the first webinar we did was about introducing prospective users to uh, the EMM survey registry, really by showcasing its various functionalities and use cases, today's webinar's focus is going to be a little bit different, so we're not simply just replicating or updating what we did about a year ago. Specifically today, uh, during this webinar, we're going to be really talking to you about um, content that's been shaped by the current state of the EMM survey registry. Um, we're now at a state where we want to engage and connect with as many data producers as we can to ensure the long-term viability and relevance of this tool. And so what we're therefore going to be covering today is very much targeted at data producers, but of course, non-data producers are still welcome to attend and participate. And we're going to be hitting the following learning objectives. So first, we want to illustrate why the EMM survey registry is in fact an effective tool for showcasing a survey on EMM's integration and or inclusion for free with an internet international audience. We also want to show when and how metadata for a survey should be contributed using the back end of the EMM survey registry. And then finally, we want to show how the EMM survey registry is actually facilitating access to COVID-19 surveys that have been undertaken with EMM respondents. Um, and to ensure that we're able to eat to meet each of these learning objectives, I'll be starting by giving a very brief overview about our ethnic and migration studies data community, the entity or party that's responsible for the actual creation of the EMM survey registry. Then I'll pass things over to Laura Morales, who will go into more detail about the current state of the EMM survey registry to, to illustrate why we truly believe it's an effective tool for showcasing a survey on EMM's integration and inclusion for free with an international audience. Uh, she'll then hand things back over to me so I can explain why we now want data produced to support the EMM survey registry by contributing metadata about their surveys, as well as how you would be able to go about doing this. And then finally, I'll pass things over to Laura one last time so she can introduce you to the COVID-19 collection that we're currently setting up for the EMM survey registry, um, because this is really how we're making a contribution to making COVID-19 surveys with EMM respondents more visible. Um, I do also want to kind of reiterate um, that if you have any questions why, while I or Laura are presenting, you're welcome to kind of drop them into the chat box. Um, and if they're kind of straightforward questions to answer, so we might be able to respond during the presentation. Otherwise, um, we have the dedicated Q&A session at the end, so we can go through um, more complex questions then. Also, um, if you do have questions to ask, you can always just reserve it to the, the dedicated Q&A session at the end, so you have kind of flexibility in terms of um, handling any questions you, you have. So um, with that all taken care of, now let me go ahead and very quickly introduce or maybe even reintroduce uh, to some of you um, our ethnic and migration studies data community. In short, we are a data community that brings together various stakeholders of quantitative survey research on, on the integration and inclusion of ethnic and migrant minorities or EMMs. Um, and so we're really talking about here data producers, data users, data managers, and data curators, as well as anyone else who might be a stake in this type of data, coming together to work on um, improving uh, access to this type of data. Uh, for the purposes of executing our collective scientific work, we have organized ourselves into three distinct groups. The first one being the task 9.2 of SHOP, uh, which includes myself, Laura Morales, and, and on occasion some uh, RAs. Um, and our main role is to participate and contribute to SHOP on behalf of our data community. Um, and we coordinate for the, the most part and manage the scientific work of our data community, particularly when it comes to the EMM survey registry. Another uh, group that makes up our data community is Ethnic Survey Data. This is an international network 
funded by the Cost Association. It's made up of over 200 EMM-focused researchers from Europe and beyond. And the primary role of ethnic survey data is to provide the intellectual impetus that we need to do the actual scientific work we're doing as a data community. Finally, the last kind of group of our da uh, data community is Ferrith McQuant. This is an open science uh, project funded by the French uh, Agence Nationale de la Recherche. And uh, when it comes to the EMM survey registry, uh, Ferrith McQuant's primary role is to ensure the inclusion of French surveys into the EMM survey registry. So this is meant providing the human researchers needed to actually compile metadata for each and every one of the French surveys that we actually have ended up capturing on the EMM survey registry. So given the specific type of data that we're working as and also being part of shock, um, our overarching mission or goal as a data community is to make these quantitative surveys um, on EMM's integration and inclusion FAIR, which many of you probably know stand for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And as part of shock, we have actually committed and planned for two specific variable or uh, deliverables. The first one, as you have probably guessed already, um, is to have this EMM survey registry. Um, this again is our free online tool that when it's fully completed, uh, will display compiled survey level metadata for over 1000 quantitative surveys on EMM's integration and our inclusion from over 30 different European countries. Um, it's currently live available in kind of a beta plus version. Um, and of course it is the focus of today's webinar because of the state uh, in which the registry exists today. Um, the second uh, deliverable that we're working on is testing the feasibility of setting up as part of the SESTA-led uh, European Question Bank, or EQB for short, a component that would be dedicated to the EMM surveys that we've actually identified through the creation of the EMM survey registry. Um, this specific deliverable is currently something that we're working on, so unfortunately we don't have anything live to share with you today or even link to, um, but nevertheless I wanted to mention this to you not only because it is one of our shock deliverables, but also because it may be a tool that would be of interest to you um, once um, it becomes available, so something that you might want to keep an eye out for uh, in the future. Um, so that's more or less what I wanted to briefly cover about our data community, just so you have an understanding of kind of um, why we even came to the, the position of developing this EMM survey registry. Um, I'll now go ahead and hand things over to Laura so she can go through some more interesting content, which is more, which is of course uh, the current state of the EMM survey registry. Thank you, Ami. Um, after that introduction, uh, what I will be doing uh, right now is just to uh, give you an overview of where we stand in terms of the uh, survey registry. And um, in particular, uh, as Ami said, uh, for those of you who have actually not seen uh, the presentation uh, that we did uh, about a year ago of the survey registry, this will actually help you uh, to uh, sort of have a, a clear sense of, of what it is that we do. Um, so, next slide. Yeah. Uh, so what's the, the EMM survey register? Well, in fact, it's uh, as simple as, uh, as a live census of the existing surveys to ethnic and migrant uh, minorities throughout Europe. More specifically, uh, there's been uh, a lot of uh, work uh, that we've uh, done as a data community, as Ami was uh, just pointing uh, a few minutes ago, in terms of how we've uh, come around to decide which uh, types of surveys uh, we're going to be including and uh, which ones are already, in fact, included in this uh, survey registry. Well, the first uh, type of criteria that it's important to, to highlight is that this is a registry that includes exclusively quantitative and sample-based uh, surveys. So we're not, and intentionally not, uh, including things uh, such as population censuses or official statistics that are not uh, sample-based, uh, 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 the, the, the product of sample-based uh, surveys. So uh, as I was saying, uh, we, we're focusing on a, a reduced number of types of, of data. Um, and very importantly, we don't aim at uh, covering all the survey data um, dealing with uh, uh, these populations that has ever been uh, produced, but only uh, those ones that have been conducting since uh, January 2000. And at least for the time being, we're focusing primarily 
on surveys that have been uh, produced uh, since uh, 2000 in one of uh, 35 uh, countries that are primarily European or uh, uh, neighboring uh, countries. And the focus also um, uh, is on surveys that examine at least one dimension of integration of either ethnic or migrant or minority populations or, or both of them, um, including a sizable number of ethnic and migrant minority respondents. And this can be uh, both uh, uh, surveys that have been targeting uh, the majority population in the country, so the general population surveys, or surveys that are specialized in this subpopulation of ethnic and migrant uh, minorities. Now, um, the next uh, aspect that I want to, uh, to mention to you, uh, next slide please, is uh, relating to uh, how uh, the registry operates as a single access point uh, to all of these uh, metadata. It's really important to highlight that the survey registry is not uh, as such a data repository or a data archive, so we don't function uh, uh, as an archive that stores uh, the microdata as such, but what we do is uh, uh, to create a metadata repository, a metadata uh, census, uh, such that uh, what we give is access uh, to detailed and kind of uh, very informative and structured metadata about each of the existing resources that we've been able to identify through the collective work of all of these uh, researchers and national delegations in the cost um, action. But very importantly, this metadata uh, is not just uh, placed online uh, with no controls whatsoever. It's uh, compiled on the one hand uh, using a very standardized procedure and set of protocols and code books that have been shared um, with all of the national delegations that have participated in their compilation, but also very importantly, it follows uh, a very rigorous uh, and multi-step quality control process that it's uh, handled centrally here at the Sciencepo, uh, by the Sciencepo team, uh, such that uh, the end uh, result is our ability to, to publish uh, online and, and through free available access. All of this uh, very rich information um, uh, that is uh, uh, portrayed by the metadata of all of these uh, surveys. So, um, uh, in the next slide, uh, I will just uh, we we're just showing you um, uh, a screenshot of uh, how the uh, registry search function. Uh, looks like uh, before you access this search function, in fact, you have a landing page um, and Ami will be later on able to share with you the link uh, to how to access uh, the registry as a whole, uh, a landing page that provides information on all of the methodology and all of the steps and procedures that we followed, not only to compile the metadata, but also uh, to quality control the metadata, plus information about the countries that are included and who has been compiling the metadata. Uh, the search tool itself, which is the major product uh, uh, that the, the registry consists of, has been designed uh, such uh, that it will be a, a user friendly tool that will allow all sorts of users uh, to search for uh, surveys that they're interested in. Uh, some people might be interested in, in searching for a kind of wide range of surveys in multiple countries and focusing on an, a range of uh, uh, integration dimensions. Others might be interested only in one or a few set of, of countries. And there's all sorts of uh, tools on the one hand, uh, simple uh, filtering uh, tool that allows you to select uh, certain metadata variables and, and categories uh, that describe the main elements of uh, the survey, such as the scope of the survey and uh, whether the survey is representative of the population or not, or what types of groups were targeted um, in the survey from ethnic and, and migrant minority backgrounds. But then you have other tools that allow you to do kind of uh, uh, more free uh, uh, types of search uh, based on keywords, and uh, we also have an area where you can uh, uh, use an advanced uh, filtering uh, form uh, to be able to access uh, to a lot more detailed uh, metadata. What that uh, results uh, in is a list of uh, the surveys that meet your criteria, whether you've narrowed them down or whether you're just wanting to browse all of the, the richness and abundance of uh, surveys that uh, we've been able to, to locate. You get a snippet 
of uh, the kind of uh, main pieces of information about uh, each survey in uh, the main ser search tool um, page. And then uh, you click on the uh, blue uh, title uh, link that will allow you to get access to another uh, page where all of the uh, metadata are uh, listed and described in detail. So whereas you get a, an initial um, a summary of the main elements of the metadata. Once you click on the titles, you get the, the, the full description of uh, the technical characteristics of the, uh, of the survey. Now, um, what is the situation right now in terms of the current uh, metadata uh, collection? Well, uh, we've uh, progressed quite a lot uh, throughout this, this year, um, uh, despite all of the various lockdowns. And thanks to the collective efforts of all the national delegations that are represented in the uh, cost action, currently uh, the survey registry in its online and free accessible uh, version covers more than 1,300 surveys that meet the criteria that I've described uh, uh, a few minutes ago uh, from 30 different countries. And these are the countries that you can see on the screen that are um, uh, in orange uh, color. Um, and we are still working on the uh, quality uh, uh, control, uh, all of the steps that I mentioned uh, before for the countries that are uh, marked in, in blue, uh, which gives you a sense uh, that we're pretty much covering almost uh, all of the countries um, in Europe, not just the European Union, but also uh, beyond uh, the borders of the European Union to cover uh, Europe and the neighboring countries um, as a whole. Now, um, uh, as, a, as a kind of a bridge to what Ami will be saying in a minute, why do we think that it's a, a fabulous idea that uh, all of the data producer communities actually embrace this tool, which is, as I said, a live census that has as its main ambition uh, to continue to be updated uh, naturally and uh, uh, organically uh, over time. Well, first of all, because uh, even, uh, even if it's only been with us uh, for a couple of years in its uh, beta version, uh, it's already well known, um, uh, not just uh, within Europe, uh, but also across the world uh, more generally. Uh, every single month, we have uh, between 200 and 300 um, uh, visitors to the registry. And um, although obviously the vast majority of them come from Europe because that's the, the metadata that we hold primarily, there's a, a non-negligible number of uh, researchers, both academic and non-academic from the Americas, um, and Asia primarily that are also visiting uh, the registry and, and using the tool uh, to get information about what surveys they can uh, use uh, for uh, their own research. And with that, I'll uh, hand over to Ami and I hope uh, that I will not get disconnected again. Uh, Ami uh, will, talk us about, uh, will talk to us about the future of the registry. All right, thanks very much, Lara. Um, and as she mentioned, I'll now be kind of switching gears and talking more about um, what we anticipate the future of the EMM survey registry to look like. And to really have a, a frank discussion about this, we actually need to talk about the back end of the EMM survey registry. And I think this will become clearer, hopefully, uh, in a little bit. So some of you may already be familiar with the term back end, but in relation to the EMM survey registry, uh, the registry, the back end is very much the interface that allows us to manage all of the metadata that we publish and make accessible on the EMM survey registry. Um, and so given kind of what the back end is intended to do or allows us to do, it's very important uh, for the sustainability of the EMM survey registry, uh, specifically for the following kind of reasons or ways. First, um, it allows us to easily adapt and adjust the metadata schema, which um, is the set of 200 plus variables that we use uh, to compile metadata for each of the, the surveys that we end up capturing on the EMM survey registry. Um, and this function of being able to adapt and adjust the metadata schema um, is something that is reserved strictly for administrators of the EMM survey registry, like myself and Laura. Um, so to give you an example of what, what it actually means to make these types of adjustments and adapt adaptations, um, we can go ahead and kind of think about the COVID-19 uh, collection that we're, we're building up, um, and which Laura will explain to you uh, a bit more in detail in a little bit. Um, but 
perhaps after we start developing the collection, we realize that and we get feedback from users that would actually be useful to have as part of our metadata schema, a yes slash or yes or no variable uh, that allows us to denote if a survey actually covered COVID-19 as a topic. Um, and we can actually use the backend uh, interface to make that adjustment. We just just designate uh, a new variable inserted into the metadata schema. And then once it's updated onto the back end, then all the, the information that we show on the, the front end, which is the interface that Ms. Lara uh, presented earlier, um, would, would reflect this change. So it's very easy to make sure that the metadata schema that we have, the information that we're collecting for uh, surveys is able to respond to any kind of new policy or research needs that, that come along our way. Um, the second way in, in which the back end of the, uh, the EMM survey registry promotes sustainability um, is, is how easy it is to actually implement um, updates that enrich or enhance um, the user experience. Uh, the tool itself is already designed so it's as user friendly and user centric as possible. As I mentioned, we did a lot of testing with different types of viewers to make sure that the tool made sense for the different types of people who might be interested in learning and discovering um, quantitative surveys on EMM's integration and inclusion. Um, nevertheless, we also wanted to make sure that if there was ever a need uh, where we would need to make uh, changes to the user experience, we would be able to do so in a relatively easy way. Um, and that's where the backend uh, allows us to make those changes. So continuing on with the example of the yes, no variable with uh, COVID as a topic, we can actually take things further and imagine if maybe instead of just having um, a variable as part of the schema that allows us to see yes, no, if the survey uh, covered COVID-19, we actually want to make this variable uh, an option for filtering, whether it's simple or advanced filtering. Um, we use the backend to just again to note, okay, for this variable, we'd like to include it as a filtering option. Once that update is done on the back end, then it's instantaneously made available as a filtering option on the front end. So again, it's, an, it's a really nice feature um, and, and an intentional design of our back end to allow for these types of changes to be made. Um, so we're not, we're able to really optimize the, the different ways that the registry can be utilized. Uh, finally, um, the back end of the UMEP EMM survey registry promotes sustainably, uh, sustainability and the way in which um, we're able to easily add metadata uh, to the EMM survey registry, as well as edit any existing metadata uh, displayed on the EMM survey registry. Um, and this function, um, unlike the other two functions, are, is something that actually both administrators and external users, so um, namely data producers, would be able to do. Um, and since this function is something that's highly relevant to data producers, I'm going to actually walk through when metadata should be contributed to the EMM survey registry and how you would actually do this using a live demo instead of just talking about it more generally as I've done for the other two functions. So as Laura somewhat hinted earlier, um, our data community um, has done a lot of the foundational work uh, to make sure that there is a substantive amount of metadata already made available to the EMM survey registry. So we're covering, um, we're going to be covering 30 plus uh, countries. And as a result, we're already going to have um, over a thousand uh, surveys uh, represented or included uh, in the EMM survey registry. Um, now that this work that our data community has been doing is wrapping up, we're just at the final kind of end of the stage where just a handful of countries are finishing up the metadata um, collection and quality control process, we now want to switch gears and have the data community um, help us by carrying on the work of compiling metadata. Um, and so the overall idea or logic of how this would be done um, is kind of based on the experience or processes we've set up for the way in which our data community has contributed metadata. So as kind of with the, with the metadata that's been contributed by our data community, all new surveys that are to be contributed would still need to meet uh, the inclusion criteria that Laura had mentioned, but um, with the one exception that we would be willing to look at um, or consider countries outside of the 35 that we're currently working with. Um, Secondly, uh, for the metadata that's going to be contributed, uh, the data community um, has been using an Excel-based template to code all the metadata, um, but instead of doing that, we actually have set up as part of the backend an online form um, so that metadata can actually be coded directly to the EMM survey registry, and we can use the EMM survey registry's backend to do all the quality controls and things like that um, without going through kind of an intermediary uh, stage like the um, Excel-based template. And then finally, as I just kind of mentioned, the metadata that's ultimately contributed by data producers would still undergo a very rigorous multi 
multi-step quality check process. Um, this process is um, more or less the same procedure that we use for checking the quality of the metadata contributed by our data community, uh, just adapted for kind of checking metadata that exists on an online form. Um, so if you are one of the data producers that ultimately decides that you'd be interested in contributing metadata for uh, your survey, we have very strict, strict or very detailed or clear uh, steps that you would need to follow. Um, and we communicate this to you um, at various stages while you start kind of working with us to, to contribute your metadata. Um, but very quickly, I'll just point out what the, the steps are. So first, we ask that you carefully review the conditions of use of the EMM survey registry and its metadata. So you have a really good sense of what the EMM survey registry is, what we do with the metadata, how it's made available. Um, and so you have, a, have an understanding of, of what your kind of role would be um, if you decide to become a contributor to uh, the EMM survey registry. We then ask you to fill in and submit a form um, so you can request an account that will provide you with uh, the backend access. Um, and this backend access is specific to just being able to contribute new metadata or edit any metadata that you yourself uh, were the original contributor for. Um, and this form is just a way for us to get to know you as a data producer a little bit more, um, get to know about the survey that you've produced, and, and also to do an initial assessment to make sure that the survey that you're proposing to include in our EMM survey registry um, is a good fit and, and also would be something that we uh, would want to uh, showcase on the EMM survey registry. Um, once the, the form is filled out, um, we also ask that you read a, a very comprehensive user guide that we've put together that really details um, how exactly you uh, use the backend um, and the backend form to contribute metadata. And we also have provided a suite of video tutorials um, explaining um, how to contribute metadata. So you have um, so we've tried to provide you with as many different types of resources and tools to make the process of contributing metadata as easy as possible. Of course, um, I do want to mention that the CIANSPO team um, or the administrators of the EMM survey registry are always there to provide support as needed. And we can contextualize, um, adapt any of kind of the support mechanisms that we have in place for data producers uh, so that the process of contributing metadata can be as easy or seamless as possible. Now, so let me actually, I need to stop the screen share and switch to the browser view so I can go ahead and actually show you what the backend uh, looks like and also the online form. Uh, so let's see, share screen. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay, there we go. So hopefully you see, um, it looks like a green screen with a login uh, page, and I'm going to be using kind of a dummy account that we have, um, and it's the same kind of um, permissions, uh, functionalities that we would offer to a data producer who would be uh, granted a back-end account. So I'll go ahead and log in. Um, each data producer or user um, who's approved to access the backend would be issued their unique um, account. It's all password protected and you set the uh, a secure password. Um, so it, we really try to make sure that it's the, the access to it is um, as secure as possible. Um, once you're logged in, you're kind of greeted with this welcome page. It kind of gives you quick stats about the types of surveys that are captured already on the on the EMM survey registry, kind of the user activities. Um, if you go here to the left-hand panel to surveys, this is um, kind of where all, all the functionalities that you need to, to contribute metadata are housed. Um, before I show you the online form, just very quickly about the setup of this page. Here again, you have the statistics of the surveys that have been contributed to the EMM survey registry. And then you can see all of the uh, different surveys for which uh, the EMM survey registry captures. And um, you're able to kind of see the same set of metadata that exists um, on the front end interface, but just in the back end form, I can quickly show you. Um, you just click on this eye icon. And it shows you all of the metadata that you would typically see on the front end, just in this different interface. Um, there we go. So to actually contribute metadata, there is actually two different methods. Uh, one would be to fill out a completely blank form. Um, and this is ideal for a survey that is completely new to the registry. Um, and you would really be compiling metadata from scratch using your available resources or sources of information that you have about the survey. Um, so to to use this blank online form, you would go here to this Create Survey button. And it opens up this 
uh, length form where all of the variables or pieces of information that you're going to need to fill out um, are mentioned here on the left hand side. Next to each variable, there is a, a field. Um, there's different types of fields. There's things like drop down menu, open text. Um, some of them are combination of text and buttons. Um, some of them might just be button only. Um, and of course, the user guide that I mentioned earlier does describe kind of on a variable by variable basis exactly how you would fill out the information, how the, the variable uh, should be filled out. So what the different options, is it a drop down menu or is it a, a button based uh, function, for example. So you have a really good sense of how exactly you should be filling out this form. Um, some of the variables are denoted with this very small red asterisk. Um, that's these are just variables that we felt were particularly important to have coded with a real response. And by real, we mean not a response like don't know, information not available, not applicable. Um, and it's only because we want to make sure that for each in survey, we provide at least kind of the essential pieces of information so that someone who would come to the registry and looks up information for the survey, they, they have a good sense of what the survey is actually about. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, our form is going to be quite long because we do collect a lot of rich information about each and every survey. We have, again, 200 plus variables, so I can just kind of scroll here and give you a sense of um, the length. Um, so it really depends on how long it will take uh, to fill out this, uh, the form based on um, how readily available the information you have uh, for a survey is. So for example, um, I've been working with some data producers already to contribute metadata. Um, those who had just put together the technical documentation, if the research is just fresh in their minds, it took them about 30 minutes the first time around to fill this up. Uh, form out in full, meaning they actually filled out each and every single one of the variables. But in other cases, maybe they the information that they had about the survey, even if they were the, the PI, um, is kind of in different places. Um, for those individuals, um, an hour, an hour and a half was was kind of a, the normal time frame. So it really varies. Um, and, and it's kind of a survey by survey uh, based um, difference um, in terms of the amount of time needed to fill out the survey or the form. Um, once you fill out the form, um, you do need to um, notify the administrators of the EMM survey registry so we can do uh, a quality control process. We basically make sure that the metadata that's been compiled conforms to the protocols that we have established. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth that happens between uh, the reviewer and the data producer. So we do um, we do kind of articulate that, that once you can decide to contribute metadata, you do need to be available to answer some of those questions that we have to make sure that the metadata um, in its entirety uh, are cohesive and logical to anyone who would uh, look at it. Um, and then also I should mention here, um, because of this, the stage of the uh, EMM survey registry, it's a beta version, um, the form itself doesn't have an auto save function. So what that means is throughout the process of kind of inputting your information uh, and to make sure that you don't accidentally lose any of the information that you've documented, um, we recommend that you click this create survey button um, as often as you can. Uh, so that way the information you, you input is preserved. Um, this create survey button is also what you use um, if you uh, are fully done kind of inputting the metadata and um, want to signal that the, the, the record that you produce for the survey is ready for quality control. So this is the form. Um, let me go back up to the top so I can also quickly show you the other kind of option uh, for contributing metadata. So as I mentioned, that blank create survey form is really great if it's a new survey that's going to be captured on the EMM survey registry, but it may very be the case that you're working with a survey that um, has a overtime component. So it might be longitudinal or cross-sectional, or it might even be a survey that um, for previous waves, our data community has captured. Um, and in those cases, it's oftentimes the case that a substantive portion of the metadata can actually be recycled or slightly adapted. Um, so we wanted to make sure that in those particular cases, you didn't have to start from scratch. Um, you had an option to actually copy and move over um, the metadata that exists for um, a survey that's of the same study, um, and then use that as the base to compile the new metadata. To do that, you go to this button action. So we can imagine that perhaps you have, um, so the, the European Union Labor Force Survey often has migration focused modules. Maybe Maybe there's a new one that's coming out in 2021, which I think is actually the case, um, and maybe you want to contribute metadata for uh, that module, you would go to actions, clone survey, run actions. 
And as you can see, it's the same blank form that we had seen earlier, but instead of kind of um, the, the form have been completely empty in terms of the fields, it's now been populated with information uh, for the survey that we have cloned. Um, so this is a really nice way to kind of cut down the amount of time that you need to compile metadata if you're working on a survey um, that is linked to or is part of the same study as another uh, survey that's already been included in the EMM survey registry. Um, if you use this clone feature, um, you still have to go through the rigorous quality control process. So the same um, steps need to be taken to save your work. And then once you're done, you hit the create survey button, notify the administrators of the EMM survey registry that uh, the metadata for the survey has been compiled. And then um, we'll go through that iterative process uh, with the data producer to make sure the metadata is good to go and can be published on the EMM survey registry. So that was um, basically all the, the kind of points that I wanted to share in relation to kind of illustrating uh, the form that you would be using to contribute metadata. So let me go ahead and stop my screen share and go back to the actual slides and see if it will work. I've lost my mouse. Uh, there we go. I'm very sorry. It's kind of, I can imagine it's kind of dizzy for the, the switching of the screens um, repeatedly. Um, all right. So then the last thing I just wanted to hit up on um, is to emphasize um, really why we feel it's important to partner with data producers and data users, even if the back end of the EMM survey registry has really been designed to promote sustainability and, and has all these functionalities that would allow it to be a sustainable tool. Um, we need data producers and data users to engage with the tool and its metadata for data users, um, they're able to validate the value add and utility of the EMM survey registry by simply using the tool and, and reusing the metadata even for their own research and policy oriented purposes. And for data uh, producers, they're able to actually expand on and enrich the metadata that's being offered by the EMM survey registry. Um, and we do kind of very targeted events to make sure that both data users and data producers are engaged and are able to support us with the EMM survey registry. Um, and as you have already kind of seen from Lauda's presentation, we're doing a really effective job connecting with data users, introducing them to the tool, um, making sure that it's being used um, by a wide range of users. Um, so now we want to focus and really make sure that data producers also kind of see the, the, the value of the EMM survey registry and make sure that they are in a position uh, to be able to contribute their own uh, new metadata, uh, because we want to, the metadata collection of the EMM survey registry to reflect kind of the the current um, landscape or picture of, of surveys research being done on EMM's integration and or inclusion. So with that, I think I will go ahead and hand things over to Laura, um, who will talk about the COVID-19 collection and also kind of hits on um, this idea of kind of further engaging data producers and, and making sure that they're able to, to support us in the, the future of the EMM survey registry. Thanks, Ami. So uh, indeed, I'm going to be introducing the COVID-19 collection uh, that we've uh, started in the EMM uh, survey registry as an illustration uh, precisely of um, uh, how we can engage and we can um, uh, sort of include uh, the data producers into the sustainability process of uh, the EMM uh, registry. As you all know, uh, the pandemic uh, took all of us uh, by surprise and uh, uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a kind of wide range of, of consequences and implications, uh, uh, obviously from uh, the health uh, point of view, uh, by uh, uh, sort of uh, producing that a, a wide number, a very large number of people actually contract the virus, but also, um, as you know, uh, making it difficult for uh, all sorts of ordinary citizens to get access to other types of, of healthcare. It also has had a social and economic uh, impacts, uh, which are really wide ranging. As a, as a consequence, uh, we know uh, that across uh, all of Europe and um, also beyond Europe, obviously, there's a number of surveys that have uh, started to, uh, to be produced, uh, some of them, are targeting the general population, others are targeting the more uh, narrowly described um, uh, and specified uh, subpopulations. Now, our initiative to create a, a COVID-19 uh, collection of the metadata 
of uh, surveys that include either as part of a general population survey or as a specifically targeted uh, uh, survey, the ethnic or migrant minorities in any given country or set of countries or, or a territory or set of territories uh, stems precisely um, uh, from the need uh, to make sure uh, that early on we can document uh, all of this uh, richness in terms of survey data that are being produced and that now that it's uh, really fresh on our minds and that uh, the production of these surveys is, is uh, being documented and that the data producers have all of the information about the technical characteristics of the surveys uh, uh, fresh in their minds that this information doesn't get lost because as you will know um, the surveys relating to COVID-19, whether for general populations or for uh, uh, kind of more narrowly defined populations, are being uh, generated in, in, in all sorts of ways. Some of them are really large scale uh, surveys, others are, are much smaller scale, perhaps conducted in a single city or in a, a, a two or three cities at a time. Um, and there are also uh, different types of initiatives in relation to what are the populations that are they're being targeted. So our main goal in creating this uh, specific uh, COVID-19 uh, collection is to ensure that we can, uh, from a er very early time, um, uh, facilitate the access to the information as uh, uh, it is generated of surveys that are being produced and being able to provide links in our metadata to uh, uh, the data archives uh, where the microdata is available or where the reports about the surveys are available so that we can um, indeed expand uh, the, the information. Now, uh, in addition uh, uh, to just uh, sort of uh, uh, raising awareness of the fact that the EMM uh, survey registry exists, what we're doing right now is a kind of very targeted and specific uh, effort uh, to uh, uh, advertise uh, the fact that we're doing uh, this COVID-19 metadata uh, collection. And indeed, we've already uh, received uh, uh, positive responses from a number of data producers that have uh, produced either general population surveys or specifically targeting uh, ethnic and migrant minorities. And our online uh, survey registry tool already includes eight surveys and the metadata for this uh, eight surveys uh, that can already serve as an inspiration as well for other surveys that might be uh, uh, in the process of being designed. And what we wish is that there will be more surveys that will be contributed, the metadata for those surveys will be contributed in the, in the coming months. And if you or some of your colleagues are actually participating uh, either in the production of the surveys or in the documentation of surveys that relate to uh, co any type of uh, uh, consequence of uh, COVID-19 and that it includes a substantial number of ethnic and migrant minority respondents. And by substantial here, we mean at least uh, 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 more than uh, 200 uh, respondents that can be identified as either ethnic and or migrant minority respondents, then uh, please um, email us uh, on uh, our email address that you can see on the slide with the subject line COVID-19 survey. And we will be then to get to, uh, getting in touch with you uh, to inform you about all of the steps that Ami has just mentioned in terms of being able to set up a, um, a, a user account for you and then fill in and submit a form that will uh, be providing all of this uh, information. Equally, what we're trying to do right now to raise awareness uh, to the data producers uh, uh, on, on COVID-19 surveys is uh, that we've generated uh, info sheets about this COVID-19 collection um, and we, we have uh, currently an English uh, language, a French language, and a Spanish uh, language, and we will be shortly, I think, uh, adding a German language uh, version of this info sheet. Um, and by all means, if you're, you're not producing a COVID-19 survey, but you would be willing uh, to translate uh, these info sheets into one uh, language that it's none of these uh, four languages, please uh, feel free to get in touch with us and we will be very happy to collaborate with you. Um, uh, in order to do that and to be able to expand our reach um, to further uh, uh, users. So uh, this concludes uh, our presentation. Uh, we uh, thank you very much for your attention. This is now the moment where you can be asking any questions or making comments. Uh, we also encourage you and we will uh, probably leave this uh, slide on 
uh, to join our community through the multiple channels that we've created uh, for that. Uh, obviously, the, the email address that I've just mentioned, but also if you want to receive our e-newsletters, uh, there's a link on our main website that you can uh, use to, to register there. We also have a Facebook page and a, a Twitter account that you can follow so that you can get all of the important updates about uh, uh, both the work that we do in the context of shock, but also the work that we do in the context of the cost action and the French uh, project. And uh, when you get the copy of the slides, you will be able to click on all of these links uh, that we have on this slide that will give you um, access to the uh, survey registry front end, as well as all of the information about the COVID-19 uh, collection and the, the tutorials uh, that Ami has mentioned uh, a little while ago. So I'll stop here so that we can start uh, collecting questions or comments.